Gap Ones. Every deep dive into survival history brings you to this electrifying crossroads, where Viking grit meets World War II ingenuity. If you think staying warm was about comfort, think again. Whether you were a Viking bracing against Arctic gales, or a WBOE 2 soldier shivering in a canvas tent, heat was survival. Those who mastered it worked harder, endured longer, and outlasted the elements that could flatten even the toughest modern setups. What's wild? The heating tricks from those two eras, Viking Age and World War II, still outperform many high-tech systems when you're off-grid or fuel runs low. Today, I'm showing you how ancient and wartime methods merge into a single powerful guide. A guide that proves you don't force heat. You guide it. Now, why did both Viking builders and W2 engineers focus on letting heat move itself? Simple. They relied on natural circulation. No pumps, no wires, just straight physics. In the 1940s, field engineers built passive thermal siphoning systems. Picture this. A firebox low on the ground, a water tank set just a bit higher, and pipes sloping gently up. Hot water rises, cold water sinks. That little incline made the hot water circulate on its own, no electricity needed. In Soviet shelters and British field hospitals, these loops kept rooms warm long after the fire went out. Vikings didn't have pipes, but they did the same thing through the ground. They built layered floors, compacted earth at the bottom, then straw or reeds for trapped air, topped off with planks or turf. The secret? That layered floor soaked up heat and released it slowly, trapping warmth inside the house, feeding on the body heat of everyone inside. You can recreate either method right now, a gravity-fed copper loop by a wood stove runs indefinitely, no pump required. Or build a Viking-style layered floor in your workshop or cabin. Both reward builders who use leverage, not brute force. Let's talk about the real secret strength here. Thermal mass. Modern heaters blast heat fast and lose it fast. Vikings and W. Atreides builders did the opposite. They embraced mass, weight that holds heat. W. Tree billets stacked radiators and bricks around stoves. Vikings used thick turf and dense soil. The formula was always the same. Build something that soaks up heat and refuses to let it go. Want to try it? Bring in stone, bricks or water barrels near your stove. Build a bench of packed earth. Even a couple of 55-gallon drums filled with water will radiate heat for hours. This is the physics of the Vikings and W.A. camps. When heat is inconsistent, mass becomes your true heater. Now, how did they move heat through the whole house without fans or ducts? W.A. 2 engineers built convection channels. Cold air entered low, warmed by the stove, rose through channels and exited heated at the top. Scandinavian and German camps use brick baffles and vented panels. The Viking approach? Similar, but all about materials. Layered floors slowed heat loss, and low roof beams plus a central hearth kept warm air down, circulating it among people and livestock. That cycle kept even the largest longhouses cosy. To do this today, just add a shroud around your stove, a low vent, and a high vent. Cold air pulls in low, heats up, and rises out high. Fuel stays the same, but your heat output skyrockets. So why do these combined Viking and Wellotude methods beat many modern setups? Because when you merge thermal siphoning, thermal mass, and layered floor insulation, you get a system that runs itself. The fire can go out, the grid can fail, and your shelter stays warm. No constant tending, no fancy tech. For the survivalist, it's self-reliance. 
For the historian, it's proof that simple, lasting solutions outshine modern convenience. If you learned something, hit subscribe to Warfare Frontlines and share this with your fellow history buffs. Old school engineering isn't just fascinating, it's still the gold standard for off-grid survival.